Hi guys, welcome back. Welcome back to designing test automation from scratch. So today's discussion is going to be on the practical walkthrough. That is, on today's practical walkthrough session of page, we are going to discuss on Git everyday commands. So the basic things which we are going to cover as a part of Git everyday commands are as follows. So we are going to uh, see how to create, how to initialize an empty repository for tracking the new and existing projects to the version control system and then followed by verifying the status of the changes and then adding the changes to the uh, staging area that is adding the index to the files adding indexing to the files and then we'll be looking at uh, we'll be verifying post adding the changes to the staging area we'll be looking at the status of the changes and then uh, we'll be making the commit how to make commit using it post that we'll be looking at how to verify the history of the commits. We'll be looking at how to verify or view the history of the commits that have been made. And then we'll make one more commit and see the diff. So how to observe the diff. What is the uh, basic information that is provided by the diff. So we'll be using some options along with for diff and log, and git log, for verifying uh, the history and also the changes that have been made using the tip. And then we'll be looking at the different views that are available. We'll be looking at the Java, uh, Java perspective, how to navigate from Java perspective to synchronize view and to repository view, and how to verify various things on the repository view, and how to work with synchronized view, and what are the various things we need to know about the synchronized view. Followed by that, at the end of the session, we'll look into how to practically work with, how to uh, launch the Git, uh, Git graphical tool, and uh, do the same thing from there or verify all these things from Git graphical tool instead of Git command line tool or from Eclipse. So basically as a part of today's session, we'll be looking at how to work with Git command line tool and also how to work with Eclipse. So let's fall back to our discussion on Git practical walkthrough for Git everyday commands. So let's navigate to Eclipse. So as a part of this one, let's create a new Maven project again. File, new, others, and in others, under Maven, expand Maven, and then we will be finding Maven project, click next. Create a simple project using the clip type artifact and click next. Now we need to provide the unique ID that that is the group ID and the artifact ID. Group ID, as we have already discussed, group ID is used to uniquely identify our project in the world in the, all the companies. And artifact ID is uniquely identified is used for uniquely identifying the project in our company. So artifact ID is with what we will be getting the final output that is the jar file artifact ID all over version number will be our final artifact that we will be getting in the desktop folder which we can take it and we can deploy it in some other projects also we can use it in some other projects so the dependent project if required so let's uh, use the name for group ID and artifact ID so I am giving project So the project is being created in the defined structure using the cube type artifact. So cube type artifact has this defined project structure. So based on that template, the project is created. You can see whatever we provide, the group ID artifact ID in the version project. Now assume this is an existing project. So we wanted to track the existing project. So let's see how to create an empty git repository. 
so let's watch git bash git bash there is a git command line version and let's navigate to this particular folder directory and provide the path so now we are in project to directory so if you wanted to create an empty repository under project to directory so we'll be using the command git init so you can see it has initialized an empty git repository under this project folder okay now let's navigate to a particular folder so you can see this is the project 2 under project 2 git has been created So now let's see how to create an empty repository. So assume the case like this. So currently we are planning to start a new project, but before the starting of the new project feature, we have chosen the version control system as Git and we want to track the complete changes from the beginning of the project to Git, that is the version control system using Git. So for that, so assume this is the case. So let's navigate to the main directory. So assume uh, I wanted to track, I wanted to create the project under a particular folder structure. So assume my folder directory, the project directory will be project 3. So I wanted to create under the project 3 directory uh, this particular git repository. So let's see how to create it is in the git init command. Git init command is basically used for initiating an empty repository. Git empty repository. So git init followed by the directory name. So the directory name which we wanted to give is project. can see over here an empty repository is created in this particular path under project 3 the git is copy the path and paste it so you can see we are not having this particular project directory earlier but since we are planning to create everything under project 3 directory so that's the reason project 3 directory under git has been created when we use this command and then under that particular directory git local repository is created so what basically the git repository will be containing this is an empty repository it will have only the directory structures but it will not have any files inside it so you can see various things like hooks information and objects, references, config, description and heads. Basically head is the term that is used to point to the latest commit. So this will be looking at a bit later. And the configurations like uh, we are going to configure some of the things like our username who is the person who is committing, the username of the person who is committing and also the email ID of the person who is committing and also we can do 
some more things like uh, creating aliases etc and references are used for pointing the references to the particular branches so we can say there will be two types of branches local branches and remote branches so the references will be pointing out the traces like which branch it was pointing to which branch it was referring to that kind of things will be done by references and tags are used in case like we wanted to track back through the version of the changes instead of commits so assume like build one dot build 1.2 is deployed to production tomorrow you have made some changes and you are you are in the current version that is build 2.0 so post that some client comes up and asks some changes on top of build 1.0 or 1.1 so at that point of time we wanted to revert back to that particular we wanted to move back to that particular version and we wanted to start working from there so if you, for that purpose we will be using the tags so tags are basically used for versioning the baselines so baselining the versions so this version contains this all information this version contains this all information so if you place the tags so that directly we can go back to that particular using the tag we can go back to the particular branches and then we can start working from there so what other information contains objects and then info and then hooks so these are all the things which we have so let's now get back so we have seen how to create or initiate an empty repository using the command line so let's uh, now see how to do it using eclipse first let's navigate to the particular path and delete the git repository from this path there are some recommendations that needs to be followed in this approach never we need to create we should not create under the working directory the same working directory of the project since whatever the changes which we have made should be different from the local repository so if we keep the local uh, git local repository inside the project too it is not the right approach it is always a wrong procedure so we should not be doing that so we can see how to do it using eclipse now we wanted to create an empty repository and then we want to track back the changes of this project so let's understand it in a bit more clear way the existing project is present so this project what we wanted to do we wanted to create a git repository empty repository that is dot which is created once we initialize it it was created in this format with dot git folder structure it is created with dot git folder structure so this is the local repository this is the working directory is working directory a for project then this is local git repository which is located on, on our hard disk so now the existing project is here now we are creating a git empty repository once we have created an empty repository currently it was empty okay now once we create using git init command the repository is empty so the changes in the existing project are not in sync
the changes are not yet synced. Now we are creating an empty repository and our existing project is there. So now we wanted to sync it. So what we'll be doing? We'll be using here we used first in the first step we are used git init command git init to create an empty repository. Empty repository. So that is what we achieved over here. So we have created an empty repository and now this empty repository, sorry, existing project is not synced to our repository, local repository. So now what we wanted to do, we wanted to add these changes to the staging area. So in between the working directory and local git repository, we have one more area called staging area. So we will not be directly moving all the changes of our existing project directly to our local repository before that we will be moving those changes to the staging area from that we will be moving it to the local repository that is all the changes that have been made should be first moved to staging area and then it should be reviewed, uh, reviewed and once it was reviewed then we will commit the changes to the local repository. So what are the commands that we use over here? We use git add command to push the changes from working directory to staging area. We use git commit command to push the changes from staging to the staged changes to local repository. So this is how we'll be making the things in sync. So once you add all the changes of the existing projects to the staging area and commit. Now what happens? Our project will be in synchronous. Our project will be in sync. Our project, all the changes are now posted to our empty repository that is our existing project whatever the changes were there it was synced to our git uh, repository and now the repository is not empty but it has all the changes what we have been made what we have in our existing project so our existing project is now being tracked in our local repository using git So this is the workflow of git everyday commands. You can say git everyday commands workflow. Git everyday commands workflow. So this is how we will be making it. Now what we have seen, we have created an existing project. That is the Maven project which we have created is an existing project. And then after that using the git init, repo, uh, git init command, we have created, we have, we have created an empty repository. And now the existing project needs to be tracked to our local repository, dot .git repository, dot, dot .git folder, and the dot .git folder. So for this, what we need to do, Let's see how to do it. So we have seen how to do those things using git pass, that is the command line tool. So let's see how to create the empty repository using Eclipse. So right click, navigate to team, share project. Under share project, you have use or create 
repository in the parent folder or project. This is the information that has been given. So if you select it, you need to select, it says select repository location where we want you to create this Git repository. If you select this checkbox, it says creation of repositories in Eclipse workspace is not recommended. Okay. Click on it. So it is not the recommended thing. So we should not do this thing. So that is what it mentions. There is always a possible chance for corruption so while working with Eclipse. So never do that. That's what it is not recommended. So what we need to do, we need to create it in a separate location. So let's see how to create that. Now instead of checking this checkbox to create it in the parent folder of the project, you can do it like click on create. So it will ask you to select the location. So let me give any location where you want to create it. So we want you to create under here. So under grid, grid practical. And then let's give one more folder. Let's create a new folder over here for that. Every day. So let's select this folder and under this folder we want to create it. Refresh. So now you can see since you are already click on create under git everyday folder now this empty repository will be created you can see the current location is this one and our target location where we wanted to have a project uh, projects working directory and the projects are local repository being traced this is the directory main folder structure under which we wanted to have our current working directory and also our local git repository so let's navigate to that particular location. It is under test automation. Get practical. I assume here. No. Let's see the other location was get practical under E get practical. So under U drive under get practical everyday commands so in the everyday you can see our local repository is created the empty local repository is created so we achieved this by using Eclipse so if you click on finish or working directory it will also be under the particular location you can see this is the working directory location now so in order to see that you can also see this from Eclipse by right clicking on the project, project, you can see git will come over here and if you click on that, it will show the git directory that is the local repository was here and the working tree was here and it was currently being tracked by the master branch and the head is pointing to none. So you can see over here. So earlier we hadn't seen this question mark symbol over here and over here. So this question mark symbol implies that there are some untracked changes. So there are some files that is not in synchronous with our local repository. That is what it says. So these files are there, but these files, so this is the existing project. So existing project is not in synchronous with our local repository. That is what this is mentioning now. So we can see to understand all these labels that specific symbols we need to navigate over here and under team under gate if you see label decorations clearly represents whatever things it gives the clear cut information question mark in implicates that it is untracked file so as I already explained earlier We have already seen it. So it's, uh, it will be like this. First it will be 
any changes that we have made it will be untracked untracked it will be untracked changes so once we click on once we use the git add command so it will be now be converted to staged changes which implies that these changes which are in fact are now being staged that is you have added the index to these files and you have moved it to staging environment for review staging area for review so from here once review is completed and everything is fine then we use a git commit command once we use git commit now these files will be pushed from staging area to our local repository so once this is pushed once this has been done now the file status will be tracked the status of the file is tracked which implies it was in synchronous to our local repository so this is what it was this is the basic information that we need to have so now this question mark indicates that it was untracked so before that let's see the basic idea of various views that are available so the various views that we need to discuss over here is you can see over here these are the various perspectives if you click over here open perspective we'll be getting debug perspective git perspective java default java browsing team synchronizing perspective so basically over here whatever the perspectives which you are using is git java default and team synchronizing these are the three things that are very important for us to have this plugin explorer kind of view we need to have we need to click on java perspective java default perspective if you wanted to see the repository view then we need to navigate to git perspective so if you click on git perspective Are already closed or minimized that was not coming up so I open and closed it so that's the reason it's not coming so the repository view will be like this so let me just make the changes reverted back so I have reverted back I have closed it I have opened it and I have closed it that's why we are not able to see these things so how to revert back the changes if it is not coming like this, I click on that particular perspective and you will see preset over there. So first let's navigate to Java perspective first. So now we wanted to navigate to Git perspective. So click on before that let's see team synchronizing perspective. In team synchronizing perspective, whatever we have been discussing over here, that is the files will be in unstaged state and there will be staging area and there will be uh, the tract that is a git repository area that is what we are discussing so how to is it really there so how do you get to know so for that you need to navigate to team synchronizing view when you navigate to team synchronizing view so you can see like this you will be seeing so this view is not populated on startup you choose to Populate git project one without contacting the server or to synchronize with the server. Yes. So it is still pointing to a different repository, that's the problem. So let's open our repository. It is pointing to git one. Sorry, project one, but we are not under project one, we are under different project, project three. So we need to open that particular project. So let's navigate to Git perspective first, and then 
let's close the other college remove for the periphery from you click on it so this is the project that we are currently working on so we can see in the bit repositories view whatever we will be seeing is uh, it will be you will be able to see the branches that is as i told we will be having two types of branches that is local branch and remote branches once you have configured those things and there are some changes or something when you have created multiple branches you will be able to see these things so i'll be explaining later what is the local branch and what is the remote branch remote tracking branches and under references you can see the head will be pointed to the first commit if there is no commit as of now so there is nothing it was pointing to this is remotes for configuring the remotes you can see if you right click over here you will be able to create a remote if you click on that you will be able to configure the push and fetch configuration so so where you wanted to push those changes from the local repository to the central repository you need to provide that url over there and also from where you wanted to fetch the information from the central repository to the local repository that is the configuration we will be configuring in the remotes and working tree working tree as we had created every day is a working directory and under that directory we are tracking our project and also our local repository so this is our project and this is our git okay now let's open the synchronizing view team synchronizing view if you click on it or else you can navigate it from git view itself in the git view you can click on synchronize and the synchronize you can see it is pointing to first one but we don't want it we want it to open the what is the project name project 2 that is what is required for us so we need to select every day as our project so we are not having the destination for so problem okay there are no commits and nothing so it's fine right so let's open it from java perspective itself we can do it from there itself right click over there team and Once synchronize, we will click on synchronize workspace. It will ask you to launch that team synchronizing perspective. If you click on that, so you can see the synchronizing perspective has been opened. In the synchronizing perspective, now it points to our project two. As we already discussed, the symbol label decoration indicates that these are the files that have been that are left untracked. So these are the changes that is the project and this project this new project existing project these are the files that needs to be tracked so these are the files so what are the files what how many files are there one two so six files so you can see over here the same information is provided over here if you place a cursor over here you can see the help text the number of outgoing outgoing files Yes. The number of outgoing changes in the entire workspace. Outgoing changes in the sense, those changes which are in the working directory but are not tracked to our local repository. So you can see here, it says number of incoming changes in the entire workspace. So it says there are some changes in the local repository that are being fetched from central repository, but it was not in progress. so our working directory is not in synchronous with the, our local repository so there are these many files that have been pulled so
so these files need to be updated to our local working directory so that's what the information it gives so looking at this you need to update our project or you need to commit all the changes you need to change these files and then you need to commit and make these files synchronous in our local repository so this indicates that there are some conflicting changes so you click on commit at the point of time there are some conflicts so conflicts will be discussed in branching and merging session so if there are some conflicts while merging so it will be indicated with the dimension one and it will indicate how many files are affected by the conflict how many files are in conflicted state so this is the information that will be given over here so this is a very important view that gives the entire information see whatever we are seeing saying in theory that is staging view this track these files will be untracked changes these are the untracked changes these are the files to identify that this is the thing this is how we can see in the graphical view that is in the from the eclipse so now let's now get to git perspective the git perspective so that one we can see from here also this is gives basically what are the changes that needs to be that are not in track from our local repository to our working directory and this gives the reverse information and this gives the conflict so this is the basic information that will be given so that from here itself you can click on and then you can add to index and then after that you can come to top so you can do from here itself that is from synchronize view or else you can go to git staging so over here also you can see the same information you can see that one there will be three areas this is the working directory here all the changes which have been made modified that is called as unstaged changes and this is the staging area where once this has been added with the index so this files will have been done indexing so this will be added to the staging area once this are added to the staging area if you go if you are going to review it and if it is working fine and then we will be committing it so once we commit it it will be going to our local repository so now let's see how to do the commit how to add the changes with the index and then how to commit it so before that let's see from graphical view so once you have created our local repository local git repository what are the next step that we plan to do so we are covered up this part and also we have covered up the various views that is java perspective synchronized view repository what are the users of these things now let's see how to verify the status we had already seen this from eclipse now let's see it from command line so type git so currently it was pointing to base directory path so it will not be displaying over here so let's navigate to the particular project path so this is the project directory so let's navigate over there change directory okay so we are under the current working directory so let's now use git status this will give the latest changes that have been untracked so there are some files that have been tracked if there are anything left to be tracked it gives us all this information so you can see it says that we are currently on the branch master and there is no initial commit and there are some untracked files so it was under this project so complete project is untracked that's what it says it is not pointing out one or two files it is saying the complete directory is untracked so this is since this is an existing working directory which has been which has been made tracked under the version control and now currently we are planning it to be tracked under the version control so it displays that entire project is untracked so it was not in synchronicity or local repository that what it says so it says nothing added to the commit but untracked files are present so 
So what we need to do? It clearly gives us the information. Use git add to track the changes. So I need to track the complete project. So I'll be using git add project two. So if click enter, it will be added to staging area. So let's click enter. So it says like there is some file. Generally this file is used for mentioning what all files which we don't want it to be committed to our local repository. For example, our logs, our binary files, which changes for each execution or each build. So that's why we don't want to track these files. So now let's go and see in our git view. So whether these have been move to our staged area or not. It was not still done. Why? Because Eclipse hasn't refreshed still. So let's navigate again to Java Perspective. And the plus sign should be available over here if it has been changed. So it was not refreshed still. So let's click and refresh. It's not refreshed still. Is taking time to refresh. So let's wait. It was taking a bit of time. So let's see from command line what is the status. If it has been moved to staging area, that is these files have been now under the stage changes. So use git status command to verify the status of this file. So you can see we are on branch master. There is no initial commit. Changes needs to be committed. So earlier it says there are untracked files, but now it says the changes are ready to be committed. Please review the changes and then commit it. So what are the changes? So these all files that are under the project to directory are now under staging area. That's what the information it represents. So see, now it has been changed. You can see the files have got a plus mark plus symbol over here. It took a bit of time. So you can see the changes have now been staged. So plus symbol will be added. This is the label decoration that was that represents the task what we have done. So now if we wanted to commit these changes, so let's see how to do it from Eclipse. So select all and sorry, not required to select. We need to provide the commit messages. Select all. And give the commit message. What is the commit message? Synchronizing, no, cracking the existing project under version control system. Get. And then there you can see commit and commit and push. Commit and push we'll be looking at in our last topic that is synchronizing and collaboration and synchronizing. At that point of time we'll be looking at that thing. So for this we need to configure the remote repository. So this we will not be doing in this part of thing. So click on commit. Once you click on commit you can see there are no changes over here. So everything has been moved. So if you look in synchronized view now, so all these things have a label decoration symbol, cylindrical symbol. It represents 
that all these things are now being tracked. So we can see the label decorations, what it represents. The cylindrical view on the file indicates so it was tracked. So this is the final status what we have been discussing earlier. Once we have committed the changes and it was being tracked to the repository, our local repository in synchronous with our project working directory. So the status will be tracked. So you can see the same thing from git. If you type the command git status. So you can see working free is plain. There is nothing to commit. What it means to say is that your local repository or local or your working directory is in sync with your local repository. That, that implies that everything is being tracked under our local repository. So it's now clear. It. So now let's navigate to Java perspective back again and create a new file. And before that, let's see using the git log how to verify the history. So we are made one commit. So how to verify the history from Eclipse team? So in history. So before that, let's see repository view. In repository view, now the head should point out to the master, and there should be a new commit ID. Earlier, it shows there was nothing. Now it shows our new commit ID and the message which we are given, and also local repository master branch will be created earlier there is no branch at all and then let's see the files there are some files that have been created over here and the log will be pointing out to the references that is the heads where the head is pointing out to it's pointing out to branch master and also the commit message you can click on the commit message and you will see whatever the latest commit message that has been provided This is what we can see from Git repository view. Let's now get to Java perspective again. So in Java perspective, let's see what we can do. So what I wanted to show is history. So how to go back to history? Can right click history source the history of the commits that we have made. This is the first commit that we have made. It you can see now it points to this commit points to the master. Master branch is pointing to this particular commit and the head points to the latest commit that have been made. So head is pointing out to this particular commit where the master branch is there. And also you can see expand it. You can see as a part of this commit, these are files have been added and what are the changes that have been added in each and individual file you can just click on it and it gives the clear cut information this is a, this is all the information available in that particular file and then you can see over here what are the things that have been added and what are the things that have been removed as a part of this file you can see there is everything that is added we didn't remove any line if you have removed any line from this file and while committing, that will be represented in minus with red, red color. You can see all the files that have been added will be with plus symbol and green color. So now let's see how to verify diff. So how to open a diff view. So let's come back from the beginning. We have navigated from Java perspective. So from Java perspective, from project team, so in history, and it shows this one, all the all the commits that have been made, and then right click on that particular commit, and then click on open commit viewer. 
so once you click on open commit viewer or commit with all the information will be open so this is the commit id or this is the committer this is the commit id and what is the branch that has been on what time this commit has been done on master branch and you can see these are the files that have been committed and if you click on diff you can show in each and every file what are the changes that have been done see so how you view the diff using commit viewer in eclipse finish the this thing Once it has been done, let's look at how to verify the log in from command line. So we'll click log. We'll display all the commits in a historical view. That is, it will be tracking from the latest commit to the previous commit, the last commit. To every commit, every commit, commit, commit by commit, it will be displaying. So who is the author? Who has committed and what date he has committed, and what is the commit message that has been done. So, there are various options that are available that we can use for commit. Let's also use the git diff command. Git diff. So, we need to give the commit ID or we need to give so, alternative color. So, is not a valid command now. Let me clear it out. So we follow with this command on options. Let's look at it afterwards. Get the five million word. later let's come back afterwards so why is this guy not showing any diff is like so it shows when diff will be shown is basically when there are a sequence of commits that has been made so a diff is like a delta that is a change that has been made from one particular commit to another particular commit so that's the reason this is the problem we are getting so let's make one more commit and after that we will be looking at these commands so now let's look at how to use the various options using git log okay we need to use hyphen hyphen set This is also the problem that we don't have consecutive commits. That's the reason it was not showing because it shows how the commits has been moved over time. So that's the reason it was not able to show. So let's look at it after making consecutive commits and let's look at other commands. So if you have graph, this is also the problem. So let's look at git log online. Okay, so all this works when there are only commit, uh, there are multiple commits. That's the reason it was not showing. So let's make one more commit. So let's create one more file, navigate to Java Perspective, and under the test folder, create a new file in class one. And then add mixed word main and then do the file name as sample test and click enter. So this is the file 
and give some information over here. I was printing, I want to repaint these particular machines as a part of this file. My first program. So everybody prints the same thing. My first Java program. So click it and save it. Now you can see the label decorator shows question mark symbol and it shows cylindrical icon with a greater than symbol. It means that the label decorator shows the information that it is dirty. Dirty in the sense there are some changes that has been not tracked but it has some change uh, that is this project is having some tracked changes and also some untracked changes. So it was having it was having some changes that needs to be tracked with a bit repository, local repository. That's why it was as dirty. There are some changes. So let's navigate over here and now see how to add it from the command line. So let's restore the files. And let's hide them. There are 24 files. So under project required, so we need to navigate to this particular folder. What is project 2? When you navigate to this particular folder, it is project 2. You change directory to this particular project. So we need to go this here under project two now. And now type the command ls. So it's having on to XML file and source directory and target directory. So we need to have it to source directory. Change to source. Let's click on this, which was test and so we need to go to test folder. So on the test. Now we need to type and this would be so files under Java we need to go so Java so it is under our project folder structure which is having this file name click and this so our file name is sample test Java so this is the file that we wanted to commit sorry we wanted to stage it so this is a change this is the file that we have created and it was unstaged so for staging this, we need to use the git command git add this particular file name that is sample test for Java. Let's copy it and then paste it. So now this file has been added, tracked. Sorry, this file has been staged. Let's use git status command and verify that. So you can see there is nothing left to unsave, but a new file is there to be committed, changes to be committed. If you wanted to reset, then you need to use this command, get reset and file name. So we don't want to reset, we don't want to unsave the changes, we want to commit these changes. How to commit? Now let's see how to do commit using git pass. Git commit hyphen m which implies message and give the message for the message one second my first change and it is a second commit click enter so you can see one file that is changed. So now 10 lines of code that has been inserted. This is the commit ID. So now use git status command again. Then see. Now our working directory is in synchronous with our local repository. So let's now get to Eclipse and verify the changes. So you can see the plus icon should be there. It has been replaced with cylindrical icon without any dirty symbol that is greater than symbol so it's in five that it was in synchronized to our local repository. So now let's use git diff. 
icon icon online which is ambiguous argument one line and no revision path not in the working tree use hyphen icon to separate it so what's the problem is it says it was not in the working tree oh we are gone into the java folder that's the problem so let's navigate back to our working tree. Change directory. So we are on the test folder. So let's make it back. Change directory and folder. This goes back. So this is the folder we are in. Not so we are to make change so yeah, I think it was not syncing back properly. So let's look at the commands again. So since we have made two changes. This should work. And this is not recognizing the symbol. That is the problem. So we need to be so uh, for using this command, we need to be under our working directory, sorry, our Git repository folder. So that is the problem. Why it was not showing this thing? So let's now get to Git. Let's go to properties Git. So this is where our revision will be existing. That is the problem which was not showing, I think. So let's write. So we are in working directory and not in our base directory where our local version control system is being tracked. That is the problem. These commands are showing those issues. Directory to dot 